Alright, thanks for watching and today I want to cover a related rates problem that I covered when I was a TA in Berkeley in Math 1A, so like eight years ago, and I'm super nostalgic. But this is actually a funny story because uh, when I solved that problem, I gave the students one way of ch solving it. And now eight years later, I realized one step of the problem was wrong. So I'm so sorry. I hope you all survived Berkeley, you know, <laughs> despite my error, but you will resolve that error. So what is the problem saying? Let me read that first of all. Uh, it says the minute hand on a watch is eight millimeters long and the hour hand is four millimeters long. And the question is, how fast is the distance between the tips of the hands changing at one o'clock? And assume, for example, in millimeters per hour. And again, this is a related rates problem, not a physics problem. So I don't want to ask, I don't want you to ask, you know, like, is this physically plausible? I don't know. I just know the math. So what do we have? So we have this clock. Okay, and it's one o'clock. And so the minute hand is eight millimeters long. The hour hand is four millimeters long. And what we want to know is how fast is the distance between the two changing? So in other words, what we want to do, we want to find, so WTF, okay. sorry for the bad notation, but we want to figure out how the distance capital D is changing with respect to time. So we want to find DD over DT at one o'clock. Where T in this case is in hours. Great, we don't even need the uh, um, problem anymore. We just wrote it in terms of math. And so the question is, how do we figure that out? Well, we have this triangle, not necessarily a right triangle, so be careful, but we have a triangle. We know two sides, and we want to know the other side. So say hello to the other side. How can we figure out the other side? It's with this law of cosines, which says that, like the Pythagorean theorem, Namely, distance squared, so d squared, equals to 4 squared plus 8 squared. That would be the Pythagorean theorem, but because this is not a right triangle, we have, I believe, a minus 2 times first side times second side times cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the two. Here in America, it's called the law of cosines. In France, it has a cooler name. It's the formula of al kashi so Arabic. al kashi Let me write it in Arabic if I remember. el kashi I had two years of Arabic, and I don't know if that's correct. Okay, anyway, so el kashis formula. Maybe it's related to Koshi, okay. Koshi, Kashi. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so what do we have? 4 squared plus 8 squared is 64 plus 16, which is 80. So d squared is 80 minus 8 times 4 is 32 times 2 is 64. So Nintendo 64 here. Cool, cool, cool. So we have d squared equals to ad minus 64 cosine of theta, but that's not what we want. We want now dd over dt. So what we have to do is to differentiate this, and to differentiate this implicit function, we have to use the Chen Lu. So derivative of d squared is 2d times the derivative of d, so dd over dt. Derivative of AD disappears, and then we have derivative of cosine is minus sine, so 64 sine of theta, but remember, theta also depends on time, because the angle isn't always whatever it is, it changes as well. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit, so just divide this by due to 
D D D D D D over D T. I mean, lots of fun. It's thirty two. Sine of theta. D theta over D T. And the question is again, we want to find that. And we need to find three things really to solve this related problem. We need to find d, we need to find sine of theta, and we need to find d theta over dt. Once we have those three ingredients, we're good. And now let's figure out theta. I think that's the easiest thing. So maybe here five. What is theta? Theta is love, theta is life, but more importantly here, theta, it corresponds to the one o'clockness. Okay, so if this is 12 and this is one, well, an hour, it's really a 12th of 12 hours. And the whole angle is two pi. So uh, theta is really two pi divided by 12. Right at the 12. And you know, uh, tau people are like, hey, cool, it's like tau divided by 12, but then, aha, if you divide by two, it becomes nicer. So it's tau or pi over six. And again, think of the whole hour as being two pi, and you're taking a 12th of that two pi. So it's pi over six, and once we have pi over six, we can determine sine. So sine of theta is then sine of pi over 6. So sine of 30 degrees, it's cosine of 60 degrees. And that's a nice one. That's 1 half. Great. So theta is pi over 6. And we'll actually need to use this to find d. And for this, as is usual for related rates, it's nice to redraw a picture. So we again have this minute hand and this hour hand, and we want to find D. And to find D, you actually use the same formula. So al kashi so D squared equals to again, eight squared plus four squared minus two times eight times four. But this time again, cosine of pi over six. And so 8 squared plus 4 squared, again, I did that, so it's 80, so d squared, that's 80 minus 64 cosine of pi over 6. Pi over 6, that's 30 degrees, so it's square root of 3 over 2. So it's an ugly one, okay? So it becomes 80 minus 32 square root of 3. So d squared is 80 minus 32 square root of 3. So d being a positive thing, it's square root of 80 minus 32 square root of 3. You can leave it that way. There's a nicer simplification because actually 16 factors out. So it's 16 times 5 minus 2 square root of 3. And that just becomes 4 times square root of 2, 5 minus 2 square root of 3. Great, and that was our distance d. So we found theta, we found d, and now we need to find d theta over dt. And that's the thing where I made a mistake, so we have to be a bit careful. What is d theta over dt? Before I said, well, d theta over dt is this constant thing. It just moves with velocity, I don't know, minus 11 pi over 6. No, but like minus pi over 6 or something. But it's kind of, it's very complicated because you have to remember the hour hand is moving and also the minute hand is moving. And they're not constants. And so the angle, it like... Um, it decreases, increases, and it's this weird thing. So it's not this constant thing, and you have to be a bit careful. So again, let's redraw this picture. And actually, not, not redraw this picture, let's just choose a random picture. So suppose this is the minute hand, and this is the hour hand. 
and this is the angle theta. Again, the problem is the minute and the hour hands, they're both moving. So in order to have something more fixed, consider the angle that the minute hand makes with the uh, 12 o'clock. So if this is 12 o'clock, let alpha be the angle between 12 o'clock and the minute hand, and let beta be the angle between, um, let me see, yeah, between the hour hand and 12 o'clock. Because those are two quantities, both in motion, and we want to figure out theta from those two quantities. I guess d theta over dt. And notice, at least based on this picture, theta is just beta minus alpha. Right? It's just sort of how the hour hand moves minus how the minute hand moves. And so, let me just double check, yeah, this is decreasing. So, d theta over dt then just becomes d beta over dt. It's a d beta, or let's just say d beta minus d alpha over dt. And now we have fixed quantities that are better to sort of uh, analyze. So what is d, d beta over dt? It's how, um, let's say, uh, beta is how the hour clock moves. And remember, we want to have it in millimeters per hour. And so in particular, per hour, beta just increases by 2 pi over 12. Because again, basically, every hour, the hour hand just increases by um, a twelfth of the whole pi. So 12, 2 pi over 12. So that's 2 pi over 12 minus. And now the question is, how much does the minute hand move per hour? Well, per hour, it makes this whole revolution, which is 2 pi. So it's literally 2 pi radians per hour. And if you want, think of it in terms of, you know, uh, velocity is distance over time. So distance-wise, per hour, the minute hand makes a revolution of 2 pi. So 2 pi per hour, whereas the hour hand makes a 12 of that. Okay, good. And so now we have, if you want, uh, 2 pi over 12 minus 2 pi, that's pi over 6 minus 2 pi. And that's minus 11 pi over 6. Yeah. Let me write my ones nicer so it doesn't become like pi. Minus 11 pi over 6 millimeters per hour. And that's great. Because we figure out all the quantities we wanted, we figure out theta, we figure out the distance, we figure it out d theta over dt. And now it's just a matter of plugging everything in. So I think it's the sixth step. Again, come back to d d d over dt equals to 32 sine of theta d theta over dt. So d we found it to be 4 times square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 3. dd over dt, it's the stuff we wanted to find. 32 sine of theta was sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half. And d theta over dt was minus 11 pi over 6. And now let's have a simplification party. 32 divided by 2 is 16. That cancels out with this 4 to become 4. And then that becomes the 4 cancels out with the 6, sort of, to become 2 thirds. And so we have square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 3, dd over dt. It's minus 22 pi over 3. And so last but not least, dd over dt is 1 over square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 3. And I guess minus that and 22 pi over 3. Which 
I found to be roughly minus 18.6 millimeters per hour. I don't know if this is physically reasonable, but to be honest, I don't care because I'm a mathematician, a pure mathematician, so I think the process at least is correct. There might be some typos or anything, but yes, so I'm glad you enjoyed this uh, related rates problem, and that was a way of me to redeem myself for a mistake I made eight years ago. Oh no. <laughs> and, uh, Yes, and if you want to see more calculus and more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.